Okay, this video we're going to do an unboxing or unpackaging of a reloading tool. And what it is, is when, because I get a lot of questions on 303 British. Okay, and what I had to do is pick up uh, another reloading tool for it. I do have a set of dies that I use, but anybody who owns a British um, Lee Enfield rifle, no matter what, will know that chambers are very loose on them and reloading for them can be difficult because your brass gets really stretched out both in length, diameter, and depending on the gun it could be extremely difficult to reload and your brass does not last long. So one solution is to get the Lee Collet dies, 303 British. And what this is is a neck sizer. Okay. You get the sizing die here. A 303 British A1. You get a sizing die. Okay, you get a seating die, I believe. The scoop and the shell holder. So quite a decent set here. Okay. Okay, we had to have a little battery change. Alright, so after going over the instructions and that, what this is, is this is a collet neck sizing die. It will deprime and it will just size the neck. In other words, it's going to have a collet and it's going to squeeze the neck like this on the case. The seating die is pretty basic and simple and it will not crimp. Basically, it's just a hole in there, this adjustment thing and a little metal stem that, that's concave to get the tip of the bullet and it seats. Um, I kind of don't like this as compared to what comes in the regular Lee die set, which I have here. Now you'd say, why did you get two of them? Well, this is a full length resizing and this is a seating and I have a collet crimp die in this set. So if I need to crimp, seat and crimp, I may use these uh, dies here. Okay, after examining the seating die that comes with the neck collet sizer and the seating die that comes with the regular set here, which would be a full length sizing die, like a normal full length resizing die, they're the same, so it doesn't matter. And I don't think either one of these will put a crimp on them. They're not designed for a crimp. They're just there to seat the bullet. That's why I think this die set comes with a collar crimp, which for me is important. I need to crimp. Now, now that we have all that squared away, let's talk about why I got this specific collet neck sizing die. Now, as per the instructions, you get instructions in here. They explain how to set this and to use this. They explain what's going on if you crush cases and all this other stuff. The instructions are quite clear. And basically what you do is you screw it down until it touches the shell holder. Gun, go one and three quarter turns for classic series press, which I have. Uh, other brands or other types, two more turns. And you want to put about 25 pounds of pressure to close the collet and neck size. Extra bullet grip can be obtained by screwing the die in additional quarter turn. Okay, even greater accuracy can be obtained by rotating the case one and a half turns and sizing for a second time. Okay. So how does this work? This little piece here, if you guys are familiar with the Lee uh, 
collet crimp dies, that's how this works. You want it to touch, then you go a turn and a half, and then what that will do is there is a collet inside here. Okay? Once you feed that down, it will press in, press this up, close the collet, and it will just squeeze the, the neck with a collet. That's it. That's all it'll do. And it does knock the primer out. So when you run the case up, it'll squeeze the neck area, and that's it. It won't, it won't full length resize. That's not what we want to do. Okay? So that's how this works. Now, you ask why. Why would I do this when I already have a die set, a normal die set, which I picked up? Why would I get this? Well, because I'm going to show you here with uh, two cases. One new case and one that I fired out of my rifle. And we'll take a closer look at this. Okay, what I have is two cases. On this side is an unfired PPU brass. And this one is a case I fired uh, in my rifle. Now, if you notice, with the new, brand new brass, which the full length resizing die will return this brass to this shape. You notice how the diameter, the taper in here is gone, and how the shoulder is different. Actually, the neck length is shorter, quite obviously shorter. The shoulder has bumped up, and it probably shortened the brass a little, but still check it and trim your brass to length especially after you crimp it. Well, the problem with the 303 British, the way the rifles were designed, the chambers are quite large. This makes the gun highly reliable. Um, your ammunition, if it's not of good quality or a little bit off, will fit in a looser chamber. That's the whole idea behind it. Now, remember, this cartridge head space is like a shotgun shell. Okay? And like a shotgun shell from the rim... You know, you can fire two and three quarter, three inch, you know, like 22s, 22 short, long rifle will fit in a, you know, rifle chamber. Well, the whole idea and the reason the chambers are loose is so if there is a little bit of a variance in the ammo, the guns are not finicky, they fire, they go off. But when you come to reload for the Lee Enfield series of rifles, you find this. Now... This case will size back down to this quite easily, but you will find that you will only get very few one or two reloadings out of your brass before it'll fail, crack, you know, and things like that. So what we have now, and I only have one Lee Enfield, okay, if you have multiple ones, I, you know, there's probably chamber variances between each rifle. So now that we have the brass fired, what I would do is come down with the collet and just size this down to where it'll hold the bullet. Then it should feed and fit in the chamber correctly. That is the whole idea. Um, because once I loaded these brand new factory brass, which basically was, you know, priming it, putting a powder charge in and then seating the bullet with the die and crimping it, um, now these cases have been fired. And just visually looking at it, I mean, it's quite obvious. You're going to do a lot of pushing back. You're going to put pressure on this and squeeze this down. Probably the base also, that looks like it's expanded out. This has a nice taper to it. That's kind of gone. The shoulder has been set up. The neck shortened, you know, from that. So this is why I chose to get the... Uh, crimp die, just to crimp this, and that'll save the brass, okay? Okay, in reality, I have very little experience reloading for the 303 British, because much like the Mosin Nagant, at the time I had the guns, I bought thousands and thousands of rounds of Pakistani ammo, Greek ammo, and all this back in the 80s, and I just would shoot the guns, 
and then uh, a lot of it, some of the brass was buried in prime. It would just go uh, into the recycle bin and I'd sell the brass. Okay, I wouldn't fool reloading it. Um, and over the years I kind of got out of it. Uh, I know they're quite popular rifles with a lot of people now. And uh, I don't have much experience, but you can see these side by side. Um, this collet crimper will do. This I picked up in a large lot. I bought like 20 die sets and I got this uh, die set in the grouping. So I didn't specifically buy it. I think I might have bought the crimp die separate. Um, or it may have come with it. I can't remember. But now that I went and started reloading, i seen this and it's quite obvious. And like I said, I only have the one gun. So it's going to be no problem to put a crimp on there. Also, I have a bullet mold where we can shoot cast bullets. And so there's going to be a lot of reloading and repetitive stuff. And generally my cast bullet loads are very light powered. So it's not the same as a full power load like was used here. I used a uh, jacketed soft point and made some hunting bullets and did some experimentation and got my load uh, worked up. And that's where I have this fired brass. So what we're going to do is I have some fired brass. And maybe in the future as I go along, we'll load up some regular ammo with the brand new brass. And we'll shoot it. And then take the fired brass from the gun. Use the neck sizing die. And then run also a jacketed bullet. And I can experiment with my cast bullets. Uh, putting the cast bullets in the new brass probably won't expand them as well as a jacketed bullet load, but that's just my way of looking at it. And we do have the die sets to do either way. Uh, we want full length resize or, you know, the seating dies are redundant, but the crimp die is the key. So I strongly suggest, even if you want to save money, and just go with this neck sizing die here. Okay, get the collet crimp die. You can buy these separately. And also another thing I warn you, see that's the collet crimp. And is anybody familiar with it knows that's how they work because they come down and there is a collet in there that squeezes around the neck of the bullet and crimps it on. Same principle with the sizing die similar action going on there. But that's what I suggest. Uh, and also beware. Right now with this ammunition crisis, reloading dies equipment are out of stock, crazy. I got this on Amazon Prime. It was delivered in a couple days. Well, not actually it wasn't overnight. It was, uh, they told me I have to wait a week, come out of Florida. But I got this for the $30 or whatever this die set should be. Not not 100 not 80 or 90 or 150 I got it for the $30. Be sure you get it in stock from a reputable place that is not ripping you off. Okay. Going on eBay where people are reselling these, you know, for $90, $100, uh, don't do it. Be patient. Take your time and wait. Now that I got it, I don't know if I'll be able to actually do any reloading with it for a while, but that's my take on what you kind of gear up with for reloading 303 British. Okay?